We have recommended that by mid-century, Vermont achieve 90% renewable in all sectors. So you can see the movement that would be necessary in the next 40 years to make that happen. Um, and it's got to occur not just in the electric sector, if it is to happen, but in all sectors. From an economic efficient, I'm sorry, from an economic impact point of view, what we found is that for every one dollar of public spending, there is over the life of the measure that's installed nearly five dollars of state net present value that is created. There's also jobs. On the transportation side, I mentioned that uh, a plan of recommendation is that we focus on energy and transportation very strongly in the coming decades. I just want to give you a couple facts. Nationally, it's about a fifth of household expenses in transportation. That's for your car, insurance, and fuel. In Vermont, it's higher than that. In Vermont, it's typically the second highest expense any Vermonter has right after the home itself. So for most Vermonters, they're spending more on their transportation needs than they are on healthcare, education, or food. It's a somewhat shocking statistic, but when you realize that, you think, wow, we really do need to focus on transportation to the extent we can because it's a pocketbook issue. It's also, as you will know from that prior chart on greenhouse gas emissions, our single largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the state from the transportation sector, more than 40%. On the efficiency side, given the economic benefit that Vermont can see with increased efficiency measures, the plan, the draft plan, does suggest a focus on thermal efficiency. It suggests that a working group be tasked to deliver a report and draft legislation targeted at program delivery, ease of access, and the finance and funding conundrum to, to help the legislature put programs in place in the next decade that will be as successful as we've had on the electric side in the past decade. Um, we should do that now because we're at the end of, coming to the end of, the significant era of investment that we've had in the state, much of which has gone to thermal efficiency measures. There are a lot of programs that we now can look at and say, what worked? And why did it work? And what can we do to develop that more in Vermont? And I, and I list the neighbor, work pro, neighbor Works program of Western Vermont down in the Rutland area as a primary example of that. Uh, on the transportation side, side, as I've already mentioned, electric vehicle challenge, the infrastructure and the funding, that's something that we can do now. It's not too late for Vermont to keep ahead of that issue, to stay ahead of the curve, so that we are not playing catch up in five to ten years as electric vehicles are rolled out. Um, and also transportation efficiency, thinking about our transportation system, not just in terms of uh, buses uh, going from our large locations to our other large locations, but really right-sizing transportation for Vermont. VTrans has a number of suggestions in the draft energy plan targeted at that issue. And then finally, just a couple of other highlighted actions. Uh, we discussed briefly in the plan an idea that Vermont investigate a total energy standard, which would actually help on the transportation and heating side, look at all fuels, uh, including all electric sources, on the same energy intensity basis, and then be able to measure progress over time, so that that 23% can become 24%, 25%, 26%. It's very difficult to compare apples to oranges when you look at home heating oil versus natural gas versus biomass, or on the electric side, you look at uh, fossil fuel production versus renewables. And so having a common metric for all energy sources would help, and we suggest an investigation in that regard. Uh, there's also a number of farm energy programs discussed in the plan uh, and suggested for further action. And then finally, as I mentioned, the state agency energy plan is included. There's also detail on other things the state of Vermont uh, is doing, that many things that the legislature has supported, of course, uh, helping Vermont be an energy leader, and of course, especially post Irene, this is on the state's mind, as rebuilding will occur. The department, along with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development and others, we're going to work hard to get out to the regional planning commissions and the town energy committees to discuss the plan because there's going to be a lot of it that has very little to do with Montpelier and is about local action and community level action. And so talking with the town energy committees about what's worked for them, what in the plan they may want to work further on will be very important. And then finally, review, revise, repeat. I would prefer that in 10 years, whoever the commissioner at that time is, is not standing before you and saying, we have another comprehensive energy plan and haven't had one since 2011 or 12. 
because this is a dynamic area. It's an area that's controversial. Uh, it's difficult. And a plan is indeed just a plan, a set of recommendations and actions, and it's only as good as how updated it can be kept. And so I suggest, and I, and I, and I urge the legislature to help us with this, um, a, a process for review of guys repeat in the future. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it.